we start off by creating two 1.2 mm incisions in the limbus. After that, we inject my cold into the anterior chamber for pupilloconstriction to hide as much as possible of the crystalline lens and for a better view of the implant iris interface. Abundant injection of viscoelastic above and below the iris implant is important to float it within the anterior chamber. Using a pair of micro scissors, we start off by slicing the implant from the pupillary to the limbal margin, creating a full length cut. In a similar fashion, another full length cut is performed in the iris implant through the other side port, creating a free wedge of the implant. At this point, one of our incisions can be widened using a 2.4 mm keratome. Using our 21G microforceps, we can start to explant the first part of the implant. After injection of viscoelastic, we perform a second cut in the iris implant from the pupillary to the limbal margin. The resultant piece of the iris implant is removed through the main wound using our microforceps. At this point we create our second side port for a better reach of the proximal parts of the iris implant. At this point the remaining part of the iris implant is fairly easy to rotate using our second instrument. This brings the implant within reach for a fifth and final cut. With the help of some viscoelastic, the remaining two parts can easily be floated for explantation using our microforceps. Unlike other removal techniques, our technique involves no touch to the crystalline lens to the iris or to the corneal endothelium during removal of any of the parts of the implant. We use a double-way cannula to remove any remaining viscoelastic from the anterior chamber. Hydro suturing is usually sufficient to close our wounds and maintain the AC with no need for any suturing. Thanks for watching.